So Borealis is a band I've recently just come into, so I don't know any of their previous catalogue to really um, tell you if uh, this is any different to previous albums they have done and if they've changed anything up. I can't tell you this. All I can really tell you is basically just how this album is. Now, the type of genre this is, it's uh, heavy metal slash kind of uh, power metal. Um... This album, The Offering, is a concept album. Uh, the album cover that you are seeing um, is basically a representation of the story, basically going out to the forest, as you can see, and they burn children at the stake or tied to the uh, tree, as you can see in the image. And then the people around is the cult that um, take children into the forest to burn them alive. So that is basically the concept of the album. Uh, the album cover looks amazing and as I said the genre is heavy metal slash power metal. So yep that's uh, pretty much uh, it. Let's get into the first track. So the first track The Fire Between Us has a bit of a build up um, as it uh, progresses into the song. The first um, part is I believe the electric guitar plugged in on the uh, clean channel. It's not acoustic. It's got a very, very warm tone to it. It's very warm. It's not piercing or anything. It's got a bit of a uh, fatness to it, but it's very um, melodic, very soothing tone he has. It's pretty amazing, the tone he has. It's really nice. It's extremely pleasing to the ears. I think um, that sometimes he uh, does maybe... Um, one of these pentharmonic kind of things. I don't know if that's um, right. It's just um, some notes um, he plays, it gets a bit um, quite sharp. So as he's playing this really soothing thing, some notes, it's just very kind of sharp attacks. Um, as that goes on, um, you get um, thunderous drums and guitars. Um, not immediately, it's just like um, kind of shot right in there and then pulled back again and then you've still got that uh, clean channel guitar going underneath then you get uh, the band coming in again with all the kind of bombastic uh, drum beats and the uh, very heavy beefy uh, fat guitar chugs and then they pull back again and then um, that keeps happening they keep adding a bit more to it until um, eventually the song uh, gets going Um, as the song gets going you get anthemic um sounds in the background um orchestral sound um you get a lead eventually um before the uh, verse comes in um the lead play is very very um nice um again it's not clean it's uh, got the kind of gain on I don't know if he's probably using a neck pickup just because the tone he has is just so unbelievably warm it's nothing like a Bullet from Valentine's type of tone or like an EMG pickup. It's a very warm, round uh, sounding tone that uh, this uh, lead has. And it sounds absolutely amazing as it goes into the verse. As the verse starts off with the uh, pretty uh, awesome lead that uh, was in the intro, it goes back to the guitar on the clean channel. There is no drums, no bass, uh, nothing really just besides the singer, the clean guitar tone that was in the intro, as well as um, a bit of uh, orchestra. So it's going for a kind of, um, kind of melodic, um, eerie-ish sound it's got a fair bit of beauty to it but it is still quite eerie in nature and i think that is the point with uh, the lyrical concept of this track the fire between us basically uh lyrically um from what um, i can gather it's um the uh cult kind of saying uh how um they want to uh, cleanse themselves uh they don't want the planet to die therefore they have to offer a sacrifice in order to save the planet and everything so they want to uh, serve God and everything. They want to uh, save the planet. Uh, they don't want the world to end. So they have to keep offering a sacrifice. 
and if you sacrifice yourself, it's um this amazing thing. You will uh go to God and everything. You'll live with Him. You'll be forever um immortal, and you won't um then die. You'll basically have a life of bliss if you are to sacrifice yourself. And that's basically the culture kind of expressing what they are about to the children, and that is the song. So they have a beauty to it because it's supposed to be a good thing they're doing but it's eerie and i think that is the concept of the verse they're going for now as for the vocalist he has a very warm and um, thick sound to his voice it's quite deep it's not one of these kind of high uh, soprano type of their uh, voices he um the band's been referenced to sound kind of like uh symphony x as well as evergrey now i don't really like either one of those singers i know i'm going to get a lot of hate for that because a lot of people do like them but uh, personally, I just find that uh, Russell, although he does have a good voice, he does a lot of yelling at times, and it just doesn't, it's not singing, it's just kind of yelling for sake of yelling. It's not hitting decent notes or anything. And then Evergrey, I find him to be slightly whiny, um, probably. So this singer is kind of more in the line of Russell's voice, but uh, definitely in his more actual singing voice where he actually really shows his talent. Basically the voice we have here. So uh, that goes on. Uh, eventually uh, the entire band comes in and it gets um, all extremely heavy and everything. The guitars are going and everything, sounding very kind of um, aggressive and everything. Same with the drums and everything, being very kind of sharp on the uh, hits and everything. Uh, the singer doesn't uh, do anything when uh, the band comes in to kind of show the kind of more aggressive side. Eventually, when he does come back in and everything, um, the uh, band, uh, well, the guitars are basically just doing aggressive kind of chugs and everything with slight pauses with the orchestra uh, just there taking um, them kind of pauses and everything just to kind of carry on that kind of um, aggressiveness, but um, a bit of beauty when the guitars obviously kind of cut out for maybe two seconds. And uh, obviously the eerie feeling. The chorus, uh, when that uh, comes in, uh, the whole band's going, everything's going. Same with the orchestra. And it's a very catchy uh, chorus there saying the time has come and everything. And um, obviously the time has come for the offering. It's a very catchy chorus. And uh, pretty uh, memorable. Now obviously uh, there's a lot of songs in this album and everything. So... Uh, even though it is a kind of memorable chorus, once you listen to all the rest, um, it, you do kind of start forgetting, so it will take a while to remember everything. Uh, when it gets back into the next verse, you uh, get the second part of uh, that first verse, so they don't do the melody part or anything, and then it goes straight back into the chorus. Then you get a solo, which is pretty damn amazing. <laughs> So with a solo like that, you can hear it's got a very warm tone to it. He's got a lot of emotion put in. He has some showy off parts with a bit of shred and speed and everything, but um, he doesn't overly do the speed. He's not just constantly whittling around uh, with no kind of right reason for it. It's got purpose. He does it at uh, the right type of speed instead of uh, just doing it as quickly as possible because that's what you have to do. He does it at the speed which fits the song at the uh, times where it fits. And then other than that, he has amazing holes, amazing kind of feel and everything. And um, a lot of kind of um, catchy rhythmic parts to the solo. It's overall just a fantastic solo. It's got very good length to it. And then after that, you just get um, a bit of a pause just with uh, the guitars going as well as the uh, kind of orchestra. Just for a few seconds and then it just leads back into the chorus which uh, is basically the end of the song, and after that chorus, the song just ends. So let's get into the next track, Sign of No Return.
Sign of No Return has again another kind of cool intro just like uh, the previous track. Although this one it's um, kind of got keys. It's not guitar, it's keys, but it sounds kind of fairyish, kind of like bells, but they're not bells either. It's just quite fairyish and slightly like bells. It's hard to explain. But um, it's a very cool sound nonetheless. Um, I think uh, maybe it's just the keyboards. I don't think there's anything else there. Um, eventually, uh, the rest of the band uh, obviously come in and everything. Um, it's not a slow build-up with the band. The band is just kind of immediately there. Um, there is still kind of a lead uh, with uh, the guitar, but not like the previous track. It's just... Uh, a riff that he's doing but it's quite musical uh what he's uh playing so it, again it is a very nice intro that he's uh doing this guitarist which um already he is sounding amazing even j just uh with one track down and this being the second um as the verse comes in there's no melody it's just uh, a straightforward uh m melodic metal kind of uh, sounding verse uh the voice is quite melodic and um holds on to his words and everything as he uh, sings. It's um very warm, very kind of nice and pleasing, just the kind of melody of his voice and how kind of uh, uh, sweet it sounds. Um, the rest of the band, uh, there is still kind of the keys there and everything, giving you the kind of eerie fantasy kind of sound. The guitars are just kind of... a chugging away not the kind of um aggressive chugs they said they were doing in the previous verse of the previous song they're just kind of um laid back a bit more the chorus um it definitely opens it up a bit more and um does more in the way of um a very kind of catchy musical soaring chorus um as the lead singer is, is uh, singing there, Sign of No Return, um, there is kind of a backing voice there. I don't know if it's maybe a female. It, it's not a typical female of extremely bright, girly sounding. It, it's um, one of these kind of uh, dark and operatic, but it's not full-blown opera kind of sound. It's hard to explain these things, clearly, because I'm struggling. Um, but... Um, and that is kind of uh, there in uh, parts of the chorus, just a female, but um, it's got a bit of a deepness to it. And it's just, ah, uh, kind of uh, stuff, like kind of like that. Um, and then it's a, I don't know if it does the kind of lead of the uh, intro, I think it is, and then it just goes back into the verse again, uh, nothing changed, back into the chorus, no real change. Uh, the solo, um, again, really, really amazing solo. It um, starts uh, quite quick and everything. It's got a decent kind of pace going to it. It's repeated slightly. He changes it up in little ways just so it's not the exact same thing constantly being played. He changes it up and everything. He does uh, mix it up uh, slightly uh, and everything. And then eventually he just kind of explodes it into an amazingly rhythmic lead. There's no real showing off in the way of Shred, but it's amazingly showing off in just how musical and the amount of emotion that he's put through into this. It just sings and screams off the page, the uh, kind of rhythm of uh, this uh, second part of the solo. It just sings the holes and everything, the play, every note, just perfect and brilliant. Still quite lengthy. After he's done with the solo, it goes back to that uh, keyboard, uh, chimey, bellish type of sound, leading back into the uh, chorus. Uh, lyrically, um, sign of no return is basically the kid being tucked into the trees, saying the trees will protect him and the rain's going to wash away his footsteps, so he's going to be untraceable. And then as he reaches his destination, he um, is kind of knowing um, what is happening. And it's just like, um, we end the illusion and there is basically no turning back. This is it. You are now going to burn. And um, I think uh, the uh, kid wants to. So he has been uh, kind of uh, tricked into uh, wanting uh, this and everything. But um, it's basically just like when he gets there, um, it's all kind of real to him now. Like, uh, this ain't... Um, a walk in the park or anything or just words now this is real you are gonna burn so he has to go through with it there's no turning back 
and everything. So lyrically, I believe that's it. There may be a bit more to it. Um, if I were to kind of explain how great the lyrics are and how good they are at telling the story, they are quite disjointed and it is difficult to know who's the one speaking. If it's someone looking at the outside, just telling the story, or if it's from someone's perspective or something, or if it keeps jumping from a person's perspective to a different person, it's extremely difficult to understand. So you just kind of get the slight concept, but uh, the kind of details and everything, it's very difficult. And it's not a full-blown story or anything. Like, it has the beginning, the middle, and the end. It's basically just the concept of burning kids. And then each song is basically just, like what each kid goes through and then what they've been told and things like that so it's not amazingly in depth it's a basic concept and it's done sort of well but not overly but that is basically it for sign of no return so let's uh quickly move on to the next track So this is the title track, um, The Offering. So this now starts differently to the other previous tracks that kind of have a build-up intro. This one just starts right out the gate with the whole band already there. Um, there's no um, unique, amazing kind of guitar lead or unique, amazing riff. Obviously there is a riff, but um, it's just not that kind of lead, amazingly um, ear-pleasing kind of uh, riff or lead that he's uh, done in the previous two. Still sounds good and everything, um, the intro and everything still pleasing enough, it's just uh, not uh, going for that amazing kind of uh, riff and intro and great build or anything. Just a bit more straightforward, but uh, enjoyable nonetheless. As the verse comes in, um, it's a lot more upbeat than the other two, where um, the previous one it was quite kind of uh, open and uh, melodic. The first one you had the kind of first part of the verse, which was just melodic. This one's definitely got a bit more of an upbeat, uh, quicker pace to it. Still maintaining that kind of melody uh, because of the voice and everything and the warm tones of the guitars, even though it is um, still kind of heavy gain and things. The pre-chorus, which is the start of the clip I've just shown, um, you can tell um, it's just um, a lot of fun, high energy and everything. And then when it gets to the chorus, which uh, you've heard um, a bit of this in the clip, um, it's just so kind of uplifting kind of bright cheerful kind of sounding great upbeat amazing pacing and everything just sounds big beautiful epic it's a really nice sounding chorus one of the uh, better ones and uh, the song's probably uh, maybe the heaviest uh, with a uh, bit best pacing maybe i think um the next verse um exactly the same uh, nearer the end uh, the instruments do kind of uh, start doing things with a mind of their own um, in a way, uh, the guitar uh, kind of doesn't do the typical um, verse anymore. He does some kind of different things. Not in the way of a lead, he just changes it. And then the drum sometimes just goes and does a really quick kind of beats and everything, just randomly. Instead of just following the typical kind of drum beat of the verse, he'll quickly put in a big kind of shrill just across the drum kit same with the guitar and everything just to i guess add a bit more levity to the uh, song um then it gets back into the chorus amazing as i said uh now the song the offering i think is from the cult's perspective again the lyrics aren't very clear to follow um because it jumps all over the place with who's speaking uh so it's hard to know who who's who but I believe this is the cult basically um, talking about who they're offering. So lyrically, it's basically just uh, saying uh, we offer um, this um, child to you. Um, we pray to the spirits, um, save us from the afterlife, because I guess they don't really want to die. And if we offer this uh, child to you, you'll make Earth our paradise. So basically keep Earth in um, a nice way and uh, make their lives better because they have offered us all to God. So I believe that is what they're doing. Unless they're not offering it to God, they may be offering it to the devil. 
it's not really clear who they're offering it to, God or devil. Like spirits can still be demonic spirits instead of angelic spirits, so it's a little tricky. But uh, that's basically the gist of the song. Uh, lyrically, it's just um, talking about um, how they're offering and uh, they pray to the spirits and their everything because they offer the spirit to protect them from death and keep uh, the world a nice place and keep life uh, good for them because of what they're doing. I suggest um after the uh, second chorus um it goes a bit more kind of uh, mellow they bring it down a little bit and um you get a bit uh kind of guitar lead not the lead solo he's just doing a bit of uh lead work um just um to build to the uh, solo when the solo actually starts again it's just absolutely incredible um just to sound like a scratch record but it's not too showing off but it is showing off in the way of just how great a tone he has and is providing it's a very pleasing tone he uses whenever he does a solo and um, it's got a lot of warmth to his play a lot of emotion and everything very catchy really enjoyable and the solo goes on for a while, and then when he kind of comes out of it, the solo is still going on, but it's more of a kind of repeated thing. But uh, what he is repeating is a great um, play. It just sounds amazing, so you don't really care that it is repeated. It's not very short repeats. It's a long repeat, so he is doing a fair bit, and then he will repeat it, so it's not overly repetitive. But it is, again, a repeated thing, maybe about three times he goes through the uh, thing. But um, it sounds amazing, uh, what he's repeating, it's very great, a lot of emotion, so it's not really that big a deal. And then it just comes back into the chorus, and uh, that is basically it, there's nothing really after that, and then we get into the next track. Unfortunately, this is a song which lyrically I just didn't really grasp it. He's singing about a river and how he kind of longs for the river to give him peace and everything and to hold him. This is like, obviously he's not on about an actual river. So I'm just struggling to understand what the river is and I didn't really grasp it, unfortunately. So if any of you kind of listen to the song or know I wouldn't mind you telling me because I sort of understand everything else, but this song, I just don't get it. And it is referenced um, here and there, so it would probably help the story if I knew what this blooming river was. But, um, yeah, starting out um, again, it just kind of immediately starts um, with the uh, whole band and everything. Uh, not much of interest, um, but uh, eventually you get um, the, orchestr the orchestral sounds that come in and um, just kind of uplift it. Um, it's uh, not a constant orchestral uh, plays, it's just a dun, 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 and then it kind of goes to the guitar chugging and then dun, 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 with uh, the orchestra and the band. So it just gives it a bit of lift and everything. And um, it's a very nice sound. It's uh, really well done. Uh, the verse um, is you've got a brim glimpse of uh, what uh, was played for the verse. It's still one of these more kind of upbeat, uh, faster paced, uh, moodier kind of uh, verses than uh, the uh, first two songs. Um, it's just a bit more kind of fun. The uh, chorus um, is um, very open, not as kind of fun as the offering. It's just kind of a bit more kind of open, sort of high energy, but they're going more for kind of a nice kind of warm relaxed kind of uh chorus even though it's still heavy a lot of energy it's just a bit more laid back than um the other one which is just a bit kind of more bamba bombastic and everything the next verse still exactly the same until near the end again where they start changing it up apart from everything starts changing at the end it just kind of starts going off on a mind of its own again the whole thing uh, the vocalist starts doing different kind of patterns and everything in their styles. Same with uh, the rest of the band and everything, and it just kind of keeps changing. It doesn't really just kind of change once. They kind of keep it going. Then it kind of goes melodic and then kind of stretches out to an eerie sound. And 
it does a fair few weird things. Uh, it's just at the end, and it, it's not a lot of weird things, and it's drawn out. It's just short kind of changes just for a little bit. It's not a lot. Um, of course, again, uh, pretty much exactly the same, I believe. And then the solo, again, it's just the exact same thing as I always say. It's got great length to it. It's a pretty long solo. And it just sounds amazing. The tone, I can't stress this enough, the tone and sound of the guitar is incredible. And the emotion he puts into it, you can just feel that he's actually sitting down, thinking and feeling this song and feeling the solo. You can sense that. And it just sounds amazing. It's got great skill. It's got great feel to it. He exactly knows how to play and how to express himself. It's amazing, as per usual. And then there's uh, his solo ends. It uh, just goes to uh, the guitar. Think by itself, if there's anything else, it's not too drastic. It's mostly just the guitar. Just being a bit kind of dark and eerie-ish. Um, then um, the... Uh, anthemic uh, orchestral stuff comes in leading back into the chorus and that is the track on to the next one so the second son lyrically is about the uh, next boy who's been offered up um he's basically been told that he is the second son so uh, he's a prophet and everything and um he has these powers and when he's offered up and everything he's gonna die and basically become a god and all things like this and everything and um the earth is going to be um like be born amazing and it's going to be this amazing place and everything when he's offered up and everything and it'll be thanks to him so he's been told it's the second son but um as the song kind of is progressing you kind of get the uh he's getting the feeling of um all the people that have died and everything before me, even me, it's all in vain because nothing's going to change, nothing's happening. And at the end of the song, um, the last line is basically, I'm not the second son. So he's clearly figuring out he's been lied to, it's not doing anything, um, there's no one there, there's no one to answer him. When he's dead, he is dead. He's not the second son. The earth is not going to change all of these lives that has lost and um he's been um brainwashed in order to believe they have been killed for a good cause he's realizing just how wrong it is um it's um uh, a more structured song than the previous ones it uh, lasts a bit longer five minutes 34 seconds um the song kind of just starts off quite high energy with the verse comes in it's not one of these uh, more kind of upbeat, uh, fast-paced ones. It takes a bit of a slower kind of pace and everything. It's a bit more kind of drawn out in uh, how they're delivering it and everything. So um, just being a bit kind of more darker instead of a bit more energetic. The actual chorus is definitely a lot more kind of uh, darker, just with the lines of hold on, my wound's still bleeding, um, things like that. And um, it's just... Um, a very open kind of chorus and everything, quite dark and uh, depressing. Um, it's still um got energy to it and everything. It's just a, a lot darker than uh, what has re pretty much been recently. It's probably the darkest one so far. This uh, track. Um, the next verse is exactly the same, I believe. Same with the chorus, but then after that, it starts uh going uh melodic and everything i think this is where the solo comes in the guitar solo it's quite kind of bluesy-ish to a degree not very blues it's just it's still metal and rhythmic but it's got a bit of a jazzish blues feel but only slightly just a bit of a percent of that um is being done overall it is just kind of um a laid-back uh solo it's not that long it's um truthfully slightly disappointing just because i know how great he is and i want a longer solo and i don't get one what is that is good and everything is a bit different from what he has played before it's just not very long after that um the song is completely different um it goes um along that time um, melodic kind of uh pace and vibe um then we get a keyboard solo so our first keyboard solo and everything 
But again, that doesn't last too long, probably because uh, they're uh, putting the uh, two solos together for uh, the overall length of uh, pleasing people for solos. I don't really see that as the way uh, you should uh, do it and uh, go about it, but uh, at least we did get a keyboard solo and a guitar solo, because they could have just done the one and be done with it. Um, and there is another solo, which uh, I'll get to when I get to it. Um, but the key solo, not bad and, at all and everything, it is uh, pretty decent, but again, not a lot of length to really understand how good a, a keyboardist is, as for the guitarist, I already have kind of uh, been shown how good he is. Um, after that, we get um, actually opera singers, uh, very eerie sounding opera singers to go with uh, the kind of uh, darkness of uh, what is going on lyrically. And it just goes back to the chorus, and then uh, the last lines and uh, have not been done before in the uh, album, where he's basically just saying, I'm not the second son, and a few other things that are different. But at the end of uh, that final chorus, as well as saying he's not the second son and everything, you do get a bit of lead guitar under it. It's not overly lead, where I can say it's really a solo. It's like borderline on a very basic solo he's doing. But because he is that great guitar player and everything, the tone is nice and it is very uh nice and everything, but um not uh overly perfect and not one of the best I've heard. But it's still very good, uh with tone and everything. I just would have been liked to to have been a bit longer and just uh, a bit more kind of up front instead of just being a bit laid back for, for everything else to be in the front and he'll just kind of linger there for a little. But uh, that is it. Let's get into the next track. Watch the world end I beg For mercy My dark reality I'm lost in my insanity You led me away Devil's Hand is the one and only melody of the album Lyrically, this is again from the cult's perspective of them taking the devil's hand and them kind of working in can uh, in uh, tangent. Uh, basically, uh, they're given paradise while they offer uh, the soul to hell, basically. So uh, they work together. Um, so it's basically them just kind of saying um, how they're uh, basically working with the devil uh, getting paradise in return, offering up people. I think sometimes they say uh, there is a line of tears, but I don't know if that's the people being offered or if they have tears because um, it is tricky and difficult for them to do it. But they do it uh, nonetheless. And near the end of the song, um, they actually do offer someone and they're uh, saying, hear the screams of uh, the child as, um, it's, um, as the uh, child is screaming in pain and agony as it's uh, burnt alive and everything. And uh, we offer this uh, boy uh, to you and everything and the screams are intense and everything. So uh, that's uh, the end of the song and that is the gist lyrically of this track. Um, it is all pretty much just kind of like acoustic uh, with the uh, singer singing for the majority of the song with a uh, violin. And then near the end, so about 20% uh, of the song at the end, uh, you get um, the heaviness of the band coming in. It's actually quite heavy, not just a, a subtle heavy, but it's quite bombastic uh, heavy uh, with uh, gain and uh, darkness uh, with the uh, chugs of the whole band coming up. And then as they kind of explode into uh, that uh, final part of the song where they're offering uh, the uh, boy, I believe it is, because I think they say uh, we offer this boy. Um, but um, uh, when that happens, um, the orchestra, of violin kind of stuff comes back in and everything so it's not again like the build up it just has an aggressive build up and then it goes into just uh, the whole band being there but it's still quite light with the violin and everything there is no solo which is very disappointing and uh, I do think the melody lasts a bit too long instead of it being like 20% at the end of heaviness I wouldn't remind it kind of like 40 so it's still more melodic, but I wouldn't mind it being a bit half because that melody does seem to go on for a while, even though it is a short song of uh, basically just four minutes. It just seems that it's just a bit overly long and not doing much in the way of excitement. You don't get an acoustic solo, which would have definitely have um, improved it. 
and a lot of change up. So I just think they should have therefore extended uh, the length of uh, the uh, kind of heavier full band part. But uh, other than that, that's basically it for this song. So into the next one. So this song has a fair bit of layers to it. It's a fairly long song at 5 minutes 25, but the song starts with it being just melodic. Um, um, guitar on clean channel, lead singer, for around a whole minute, it's uh, just going like that. Uh, the guitar tone, it's not dull, it's not boring. It is actually very nice what he is playing, and um, the singer sounds uh, really nice. Um, as the minute or so is up, uh, the whole band again kind of come in and then you get that lead which was the start of the clip I've just shown, that is uh, basically uh, where we are at the song. Um, the lead as you heard, um, quite short but very nice, uh, great tone as usual. And then um, as the verse comes in, uh, the singer's got a bit of um, a catchy rhythm going on, the uh, guitar um, for the uh, verse um has some great play uh with um it just kind of um kind of pinching around the guitar and everything making these amazing kind of sounds and everything um just amazing uh the pre-chorus um really opens up to emphasis uh what's happening in the song where uh, the uh boy is seeing a light and everything so um like kind of orchestral kind of sound just there kind of uh goes full force here and then the band kind of opens it up like he's seeing the light and everything and then um the chorus not being one of the most upbeat or anything but it is still quite kind of up there and everything just not uh the most um that they've done um as he kind of runs into the light uh the verse uh believe goes on exactly the same same with the chorus and uh, the solo here is quite disappointing because it's not the best um, he's done. Still good and everything because he's a good guitarist, so it's still good. Just I believe he can do better, and it is overly short. It only lasts just a fair few seconds. It's not really enough length for like, what I consider a proper solo, at least. Um, which is disappointing. But then after that, everything uh, pretty much kind of changes. Uh, from there, the whole rhythm of it uh, kind of uh, changes and everything. It's uh, kind of a lot more kind of straight uh, with you and everything and uh, heavy. And uh, then it kind of goes back to the chorus. Uh, so a fair few changes to this song. Uh, the song is probably the most fun so far for all the kind of layers and structure. There is a lot going on. But as for solos, unluckily, it's just that's kind of what brings it down. If there was a great solo, this would be an incredible song. Lyrically, this is um starting um as you can hear with the first lyrics because that is the uh, start of the song as you heard. Is he's being hunted and uh, everything by the cult, but um he's being told that he's gonna go obviously kind of see God and everything. So he's talking about seeing the light, and that's what he wants. So as he burns and everything, he sees all the cult kind of praying and everything to uh, the spirit. So as he burns, and then he's looking up into the light and everything, hoping God is there. He thinks God is there, and he's uh, basically saying, I can't take the pain anymore. Please come save me. So um, he's saying he's running into the light. Now, if the light is really there, or if it's in his head, we don't know. Um, He wants to go to heaven and everything. And the pain is um too much for him. He can see the cult and everything they're hunting him. Um, I don't know if he didn't go willingly because he does kind of seem that he really wants to get into heaven, but I just think that's maybe because he's burning. But I don't know because they did say at the start of the song he is being hunted. So I do think he was hunted. They kill him and uh, now that he's uh, getting burnt and everything, he's just hoping that um he can go into heaven and uh, he sees a light. So... That's it for this track. Um, lyrically, still very dark and depressing, but uh, a lot of uh, good kind of guitar 
uh, riffs going on and everything. We had that good kind of lead at the start. Um, melodic uh, intro back into the verse, which was very kind of catchy, open uh, sounding pre um, anthemic pre chorus. The actual chorus, um, slightly upbeat, but nothing too special. Solo, slightly disappointing after that solo. Um, great uh, play again with the whole band and the vocalist. Uh, nice uh, change of pace. So, um, still a good song. It's just unfortunate about the solo. So let's get into the next track. So Scarlet Angel starts following the same uh, trend as the previous track, with it starting melodic, with the uh, clean guitar and the vocalist. Goes on for around a minute. Uh, yet again, uh, you get slight bits of orchestra kind of sprinkled it, uh, in throughout. And then uh, it get, goes immediately into the verse. I don't think you get kind of like that cool intro with the cool lead in the previous track. I think it just goes straight into the song, I think. And um, it's going at a pretty kind of mid-tempo pace. Nothing uh, too um, fast or uh, bombastic. It's just kind of going at its steady pace. And uh, the guitar riff is... As per usual, very uh, nice, uh, very pleasing uh, riff, uh, very cool sounding. Uh, the vocalist, um, just mid tempo, uh, mid pace, and everything. The pre chorus um, definitely kind of opens out. Um, everything kind of just pauses as the singer kind of goes and everything. And then it's got one of them kind of like very slow, dramatic builds as it builds into the chorus. The chorus. Um, not one of the greatest, I must admit. Um, but um, it's got the orchestra there. It's got the full band there and everything. It's not uh, overly high energy or anything. It's not overly open. It's just a chorus with just sounds like Borealis. Nothing unique or special really about it. Um, then it gets back. Actually, I don't think it goes back into the verse. I think immediately after that, you actually get a solo. So they change the place of the solo and everything and change uh, the overall structure of the song, uh, moving things around, so I don't mind that. Luckily, this time, the solo goes back to form, seeing that uh, the previous few songs, uh, they've been a little um, off with length and uh, just not being on par with what I have been hearing by the guy. But here, um, the solo lasts a fair while. It sounds amazing. It is amazing. The end of the solo, he actually turns it down and he does a jazzy outro. Um, well, not jazz, more blues. Yeah, it, he just kind of takes it down. The rest of the band takes it down. And then he just does a bit of blues it, uh, to uh, end the uh, solo. So it's incredible. And then as it ends, uh, it just kind of goes back into uh, the verse with a bit more kind of energy um, in it. The pre-chorus which opened up and everything kind of stripped down with uh, the kind of dramatic build, this pre-chorus um, is actually a lot more aggressive this time with its uh, build and everything. And it's just got so much tension and aggression in there. The chorus doesn't exactly change, but uh, near the end of the song, which we are now, um, they bring in a female vocalist and everything. She doesn't sound overly impressive. Uh, the last track, which... Um, she comes back, uh, she sounds a lot better there, but um, still it is nice because it is something new, it's a new voice, so it's good just to get diversity because I always say you need diversity, you can't just do the same thing over and over again. Lyrically, again, uh, this is kind of just like the previous track of uh, the uh, child uh, basically... Uh, being tied up and everything, he sees the cult around him and everything, he feels the fire um, coming. And um, I think he's just basically asking for an angel, just like the previous person was uh, wanting to see the light and go to heaven. This person's uh, looking for a garden, guardian angel to kind of take him away and everything. Um, so he's just been dragged there, he's uh, been uh, torn down and everything, beaten and uh, everything, and he's tied up and everything. And he feels the fire and everything. He feels the flames. He sees the cult around him, but he's just basically saying he wants um, a guardian angel type of thing. So lyrically, not exactly 
unique because it is lyrically kind of the same as Into the Light. Unless I'm missing something, which by all means I truly could be. So if that's the case, you can please tell me. But if not, uh, then I guess I won't know. And maybe I'm actually right. So that's it for this track. Let's get into the next. So The Awakening, lyrically, is about uh, this next child being strapped to the tree and uh, he's basically um, hoping to get revenge. So he's basically saying, when you kill me, um, I'm going to rise up and basically come back and kill all of them. The cult, obviously. So, uh, yeah, he's basically just saying the cult is surrounded in darkness and because they're surrounded in darkness and evil, they're going to die because of uh, what they've done and everything and they can't uh, get away with this forever. So they will get their comeuppance and uh, when he dies, he's just going to rise up um, again and wipe them out, just absolutely kill all of them uh, for what they're doing to him and he will become more powerful. So um, that's The Awakening. Um it doesn't start off melodic, it's going back to like its uh, kind of heavier starts and everything. You get a bit of uh, that kind of guitar lead again, leading into the verse. Um, and um, yeah, it's got um, a bit of one of the more kind of up-tempo kind of uh, paces and everything. And the chorus, um, a bit open, but then at um, some part it's got a bit of a decent rhythm to it, and then at other parts it's just got a bit more of that kind of open anthemic kind of sound orchestral stuff going on and then after that chorus we get another kind of lead and everything the lead solo again a little short um not one of the shortest he's done which it was disappointingly short but still not as long as i would kind of like it good solo nonetheless what is given i just would have liked it to have been increased after the solo, um, again the um, we get something completely different uh, musically from a uh, lot of them, and uh, then we just get back to the chorus. So um, again, uh, we get um, two short leads at the beginning. Then we have the actual lead solo, not overly long. The final chorus, there is again kind of a lead being played under the chorus, but it's not one of these big leads that uh, go under the chorus. It's just one of these bit more on the laid back side of uh, how he uh, approaches it. But um, other than that, it's uh, great. It's got uh, some uh, decent uh, energy to it. The chorus ain't one of the best um, on the album, but it's still good. The solo, pretty good, not that long. There are leads, though, there with the two at the beginning and the one in the chorus, so you do get your guitar um, stuff um, throughout. So, still not a bad track, lyrically, um, just in kind of strength of uh, the uh, kid wanted to come back to uh, murder the lot of them is uh, pretty interesting. Don't think he gets uh, away with it, though. I don't think that happens, but nonetheless... Um, Interesting concept, just um how this uh, kid is uh, seeing things different to the other one. He's, more, instead of looking for heaven, he's looking to just become powerful and seek his revenge because he thinks he deserves it and everything. So, kind of interesting, but let's get on to the next track now. As some of you may be hoping now with that clip I've just shown you, just hoping what this may actually be, you are right. This is a whole song dedicated to the lead guitarist. So it is an instrumental. And it's not just an interlude, it is proper solo stuff, as you heard. It's not a long song, uh, mind you. It's only 2 minutes 19 seconds. Um, the song doesn't just start out, out the gate, it is kind of a short start, um, 
with him kind of building up, doing it kind of the blues uh, kind of way. And then eventually it gets to that kind of cliff I showed you where it, he kind of gets a lot more technical. Then near the end, he goes into a very kind of rhythmic, really beautiful uh, sound. And then uh, the volume at the end of the song, just the turn down thing where he's just doing his lead and everything, but the volume keeps decreasing and decreasing and decreasing over time until he's shut off. And the tone he has and the play and the lead, it's amazing. It's like near enough a uh, two minute solo from him it's amazing he's a fantastic guitarist it's an awesome solo it's a shame you can't get more you just want so much out of him because it's so amazing it is brilliant if you love guitar leads if you seriously want to see how good the solos are and everything but don't want to go through the songs you just want to know how good as a guitarist he is just find this track and just listen to it and it'll show you how good he sounds the tone he has how great he is at playing and show you he is great at his instrument fantastic track it is amazing lyrically i can't tell you what it means in the story seeing that there are no bloody lyrics so other than that just he is fantastic it has a slow start and then at the end it uh, turns off and it is more in the way of blues that he's playing in the middle it's uh, that kind of very quick paced metal blues and then everywhere else is just kind of catchy melody kind of blue stuff with the kind of metal element shoved in there. And then that's basically it. So let's get on to the next track. Forever Lost is about uh, this child that's uh, being burnt alive at the moment. Um, he's basically saying how uh, the cult promise um, each child that uh, they have all these sins and they need to wash them away in uh, the flames. So uh, they will be saved and they'll go to heaven because if they don't do this, they are going to go to hell and they're going to um, live in eternity in suffering because of it. So they have to be saved with the fire. That's the only way. So the kid is basically just saying um, these are lies. Um, we don't really have sins. You're not washing anything away. You are basically just killing us. And um, they don't go on. They're not remembered or anything. They don't live once the fire starts and consumes them they are forever lost that is it no one remembers they're not anywhere they're gone that is it over so they are forever lost so that is pretty much the gist of uh, the lyrical side of this song um it starts quite uh, quick quite upbeat and everything same with the verse it's still got the uh, kind of melody aspect to the verse but it's a bit more upbeat compared to uh, some of the other verses on this album. Um, the uh, riff and everything uh, with the guitars, is, is same with the intro, uh, what is being played sounds uh, incredible. Uh, the pre-chorus, you get a bit of um, an operatic uh, sound, a bit. I don't know if there is opera singers maybe in there. Um, could be, or it may just be orchestra, or just kind of some kind of um, effect to make it kind of operatic sounding. The uh, chorus um, is um, open, but has a lot of energy to it. Um, they say forever last, forever, blah, 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 blah. And um, yeah, a lot of high, high energy open though. Uh, so it's a fairly soaring uh, style of uh, chorus. The solo in this one is um got a fair decent length to it. Uh, again, I still think it should be a tad longer, but it's uh, definitely not one of the short ones. It's uh kind of in the middle of uh, what you kind of want and uh, what isn't really acceptable for length. It's uh, kind of in the middle, if not just a, a bit over that. Uh, what is being played... Again, still amazing. It's uh, a bit more uh, fast paced, uh, the solo here, so uh, into more of the kind of uh, quicker pace of uh, the guitarist. But um, not overly shreddish because he definitely knows that he needs to have the emotion there and the warmth and everything. He just completely goes with a full on shred. There's just nothing musical there in the slightest, and he knows this. After that, um, it kind of uh, just kind of keeps uh, going. Uh, not the solo, just um, music uh, with um, the kind of orchestra sound, uh, maybe opera singers and the band, and that kind of carries on for a while. And then we get a change up um, as per usual with uh, this uh, second half of the album, with uh, the structure just giving you something new, leading you back to the chorus. 
And that is basically it. Now we get the onto the last track and the longest track, uh, nearing nine minutes. So we've got an epic track to end on. So let's see what it is. So this is it, final track, The Ghosts of Innocence, the longest epic track, 8 minutes 45 seconds. So let's just get straight into it. Now, the uh, lyrical uh, kind of meaning of this track, from what I believe, The Ghosts of Innocence, is basically the ghosts that are left over. They have not basically gone to one side or the other, they are left lingering. I think it is quite difficult to follow these lyrics compared to uh, concepts of other records um, that I have uh, listened to. But I believe it is basically the ghost of Lingering uh, trapped in this uh, kind of limbo state uh, between uh, like heaven and hell. They're not really one way or the other, but they're also not a part of life. So they're just stuck. And uh, they're basically just asking for uh, someone to kind of come get them bring them back to life or take them to the afterlife, just send them one way or the other so they're not just kind of trapped there. And also seeing um, all these other souls basically being killed and uh, becoming part of them as well and stuck with them. Um, so lyrically, that's sort of where it's at. Uh, when that woman comes in, which I said in the previous track she was in, uh, she's back again. Now, uh, she's the voice of some kind of character. I don't know who the hell she actually is. I couldn't tell if she was the angel or the devil or the cult or something. But the lead vocalist um, is saying a line of, get out of my head, and she's saying, I'm part of you. But it's just like, I have no idea who's a part of who. Because I don't know who he is, and I don't know who she is either. So that's very tricky, and I'm incredibly intrigued of who the hell she is and who he is. So if anyone listens and looks up the lyrics, they can bloody tell me what they think. <laughs> and that would uh, be, mean a great deal to me because I am very intrigued about that. Uh, so basically the song starts uh, melodic uh, with uh, just uh, the clean channel guitars as they uh, usually do and the lead vocalist. Um, the chorus is one of the more anthemic kind of uh, choruses with orchestra and things. Um, the solo um, is quite pathetically uh, in length for a song of 8 minutes 45. It should be longer, especially seeing that one part of the song, they just dra drag out a musical element, but there's no lead going on. It's just musical playing for a very long period of time. It's just like you could have at least kind of cut that down and put that into the bloody solo. So very disappointing because with an 8 minute 45 you would expect an epic kind of solo but you don't get one, it is very short. There is a keyboard solo that kind of comes after it though, um, but even that's kind of short and nothing care too spectacular. But it is nice just to kind of see that the keyboardists can actually do something of their talent. It is nice when they kind of uh, show just how uh, good they can be. Um, after uh, the keyboard solo, it goes uh, just into piano with uh, the male vocalist. And then uh, he goes out and then the female comes in with uh, the piano. And she sounds very nice. She um, has a high pitch to her and everything. Um, very bright voice. And uh, she, she goes on for a fair while uh, with her kind of uh, lead. Uh, not overly too long. It's just there uh, she gets um, a good, um, you know, part. So they don't just cut us short, and they don't. Oh, and it's not overly long. It's just you know fairly suited. You know, if you uh, get what I mean. Uh, eventually, it does the band does come in, and it gets back to the heavy side, and uh, he comes in, and then uh, she gets a nice lengthy heavy part, and uh, she sounds incredible with uh, the rest of the band. They're just elevating everything with her amazingly soaring, uh, beautiful vocals on top. She sounds incredible, and it makes me kind of actually want her to be an even bigger part of the song. Then it kind of jumps from uh, both of the vocalists saying, uh, him saying, get out of my head, and then she goes, I'm part of you. And then he says something, and then she comes back in again, and then he basically just finishes the rest, and that is basically it. So she has a melodic long part, then a heavy long part, and then there's um, a jump between them um, twice, and then he goes, she goes, he goes, she goes, and then he ends it. And then after that, it's basically an extremely long... Um, musical elements of just nothing much uh, going on it just basically builds with uh, the uh, anthemic and um, orchestral stuff they just kind of get louder and louder and bigger and bigger until you get kind of to the end of the song which uh, gets back to that uh, kind of chorus uh 
The uh, female singer does come back. Uh, she basically uh, just is doing a duet with a uh, male vocalist, so where uh, she just kind of sings underneath him. Uh, sometimes he gets his own kind of lead and everything. She doesn't get any lead, uh, so sometimes it is basically just him, and then other parts where uh, she uh, kind of uh, just sings underneath him. And uh, that's kind of about it. I do prefer her where she uh, actually had proper lead and everything and kind of danced around with uh, the uh, male vocalist with uh, Get Out My Head on the Party. It was just incredible. And then um, I would love to see more of it. Um, and then the song just ends on some keys. And that is basically it. So, um, yeah, that is the end. And now we're left with the sum up. So, overall, it's not a bad album at all the album cover is incredible for one uh the concept is very interesting about them um, because of people burning kids alive and then uh, how where uh, each kid kind of feels and then the kind of lingering afterlife of uh, being trapped um in limbo is quite interesting um lyrically it is quite difficult to follow and everything i really have to kind of think about it and sometimes it's hard what point of view i'm really listening to and some songs i think i've actually even got the uh, wrong representation um so it's quite difficult uh to uh, kind of follow but it, overall interesting there is um a lot of um kind of uh, differentials as uh, each song goes on like the first two songs had intros and then the rest of them just had an immediate start and then we had the melodic song and then after that we have the melodic start and then back to uh, the typical stuff we had an instrumental lead which was amazing the first few tracks it was the basic structure and then the second half of the album we had more of an intense structure the last song was um the nine minute kind of epic and everything Solo wise, great. So there is a lot of good. Negative. Um, one, obviously, the lyrics um, are a little tricky to follow. And uh, the solos, uh, some of them were overly too short. Uh, the melodic song didn't really have a solo, so that was a problem. Um, so guitar wise, even though it was perfect, they did have some problems with that, then some problems with the kind of lyrics, and it was difficult to follow. And uh, other than that, um, even though there was a lot of differentiating between songs and different structures and everything, I would like it to have had a change with uh, just the overall vibe they kind of had. Because even though things kind of kept changing, it was always the same kind of vibe they put off. Like the vocalist didn't really do anything really new or unique with the voice, neither did the guitars in the band. They just kind of changed up... Um, they just moved things from one place to the next and just repositioned as parts of the song as well as um just um changing how it flows and pacing and things but other than that it was uh, pretty much exactly the same so it would have been nice to have just got some different kind of guitar tones uh, some different vocal um styles and pitches and everything um but other than that it is um a pretty fantastic album and putting a score on it i would probably be going with an 8.5 it is a very very good album it's incredible but um some of the solos um definitely pull it short the lyrics do kind of pull it short um as well even though the story and the concept is really good and everything and interesting it's just a bit difficult to follow so i think just think a bit better uh lyric writing just to make it easier to follow album cover fantastic but that's not really important i just really love it and um yeah i just would have liked um a bit more kind of uh, sound differentiating um with uh you know guitar tones and uh vocal pitches and styles he does obviously kind of change it and everything but he, he, i've heard vocalists which uh, definitely uh really go out there and uh, change their style and everything and put on personas and everything through their voice uh so it was just been really interesting to hear that especially if he's talking about characters like uh putting on kind of a voice for each kind of child and then the cult members and everything so he just kind of had character basic um basis so that would have been very um interesting and really cool but obviously he didn't do that but 8.5 still a very good score and um great album so that is it again a long um review which i am very sorry for but um a lot to talk about and i haven't done one of these for a while and some people that watch me do kind of want me to go proper in depth so that's what i've done um 
sometimes I won't go as in depth for the times I will. So I'm going to try and keep cutting it up. So uh, if someone wants uh, something shorter, they can. And if someone wants something longer, they can. And just see how that kind of goes and what people think of that. But uh, yeah, until my next review, I'll see you guys later. Bye. <laughs>